Welcome to Lecture 8 for the ICC Intermediate Course on Culture. And we're going to take a second look at postmodernism, and I am using a particular notes from a professor, professor from a German university. Um, I have actually asked his permission to use this and he's very happy that you should be um, aware of some of his training. I thought first of all it'd be interesting to introduce you to the professor. Uh, he has a chair at the University of in Germany and he says this interesting thing which I'll just read for you but it's there on your slide. He says he cannot find a contradiction between scientific psychology and Christian faith. Scientists observe and describe the creation. How they interpret these observations for themselves is a personal and ideological question which is no longer the case in psychology, biology or medicine. And although I as a Christian cannot understand that someone is not interested in knowing the Creator in the face of miracles of creation, I find that in all sciences believing and disbelieving people have made great achievements. So that's my introduction to the professor. I thought you would probably meet certain words in this lecture that you may be not quite so familiar with and so on this slide you've got five words that I know are in the lecture and I thought it'd be good if you look to them so that you understand them before you get there. The professor starts by saying welcome to a postmodern culture. Every age was godless, so is our time. The human problem is not a God who hates man for his sin, but the sin that separates man from a loving God. Welcome, postmodern culture. Postmodernism is not post Christian, but post Christendom. Postmodern is also post secular. Being open for everything includes includes openness for belief in Christ with great spect with great skepticism towards Christian institution churches etc postmodern culture is not the second fall of man but the time in which God has placed us it is the challenge of our lives and our faith and it is part of God's story with us with his church and with mankind. Postmodernism is not primarily defined by the excesses and perversions of a godless time, but partly answers to the moral failure of modernity. So let's look first of all at what we call modern culture. Modern man is rational. Human behaviour is guided by reason. The state rules for the well-being of all. The church defines ethics and shows the way to heaven. Scientific research is in service of humanity. Technical progress will make life easier. Social class determines lifestyle and whatever. Among evangelicals there is a perception of postmodernism. The perception would be that it is the downfall of Western culture, the last days of moral decay, a turning away from God, it's a hostile environment, it's the root of almost any evil from national socialism to pornography, it has arbitrary beliefs, no truth, it or autism and egoism, or if you like, Homo Aspergius. It's a self constructed identity. It is self construction instead of identity. Got that? It's self construction instead of identity. Within postmodernism, 
amongst evangelicals anyway, there are no shared values, fun takes the place of meaning, subjective experience is there instead of persuasion or principle or vision, virtual stimulation takes the place of real life, instant sex kills eros, only death is exciting, indifference, if everyone is right, nobody is. So again, perhaps from an evangelical point of view, the conclusion would be that postmodern culture is godless, is terminally ill morally, socially and emotionally, and so we might say, let's retreat into our Christian fortress, raise the drawbridge and wait for the second coming of the Lord. But postmodernism is out there and it's amongst us. Finding our place in culture. You and I are postmodern human beings, whether we want to be or not. We decide for ourselves what we believe, and what we think and what we do. We draw our own conclusions. We construct our own realities and don't let others tell us what the truth is. In the world, but not of the world, look at the opportunities for Christian evangelism in all of that. The professor says, welcome postmodern culture. Self-construction is part of the original creational task, subdue the earth. The creator made man in his own image to be creative, including the creative development of their own person and lifestyle. We didn't create ourselves, but we can thank God for human potential. Welcome postmodern culture. Living in truth does not mean to hold the right persuasions, facts and dogmatic beliefs for true. It means a relationship with the person who says of himself, I am the truth. Christian truth thus always includes humility and never puts their own insights to be absolute. Have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9. Welcome postmodern culture. self actualization is not another code for pleasure principle but for congruence, genuineness, authenticity and saying what I really mean. Retrospective modernism. Don't forget that the professor is German, hence his use of German. In the Reformation, Luther declares personal conscience to be the final moral criteria. There is no papal authority. Enlightenment, belief in reason, ends the Middle Age. To recap modern culture, modern man is rational, human behaviour is guided by reason, the state rules for the well-being of all, the church defines ethics and shows the way to heaven, scientific research is in service of humanity, technical progress will make life easier, social class determines lifestyle and career. Modern culture, authority knows what is good and true and makes rules that should be kept. Decent people know what is right and wrong. The nuclear family is the basic social unit of society. Men are masculine, women are feminine and every one knows what that means for one's place in family, vocation and society. However, modernism was slaughtered in Verdun, gassed in Auschwitz, atomized in Hiroshima, tortured to death in Soviet gulags, knelt pain bombed in Vietnam, nuked in Chernobyl, and so on and so on. We are postmodern because we know people act irrationally, the state is dangerous, the church conspires or keeps quiet when its power or wealth are at risk, religion is a matter of opinion, science could kill us, technical progress is destroying our environment, social 
ground should not determine lifestyle and when it does we consider it to be totally unjust. We are postmodern because we know there are no generally accepted authorities. Everyone must have his or her individual morals and ethics. The nuclear family was a 20th century experiment that doesn't seem to work very well because today a modern family may look like this. It could look very confusing. It could have children in it who have not a relationship by birth to either the father or the mother. The family. I don't need a counsellor. After all, I have a husband and a family. Neither would I need a counsellor if I didn't have my husband and my family. In conclusion, modern man, enlightened man, acted and thought in clearly defined notions. Postmodern man, postmodern people, must decide for themselves what we want to believe and think and how we would like to live. But this freedom has a price. Part of the price is there is nobody there to tell us who we are and how to succeed in life. And we're not yet very good at postmodern living. There is no way back to the modern. There are many dead ends in this postmodern world. What I own is who I am, which is having instead of being. Consumerism, fun instead of meaning. Fantasism, simplistic answers. Addiction, chemical and behavioural painkillers. Esoteric, back to pre-modern times of the Middle Ages. So how should we define ourselves? Not by the railway, but sailing is the metaphor for our time. Define a position, develop a vision, get on course. Which really, uh, but this isn't the place to, to talk about it, and there's too much involved in it, but it's really a Celtic vision of Christian experience versus a Roman vision of Christian experience. Getting on the right course in life. Instead of given social norms, our life is determined by networks. We need good relationships, functional communication and strong personal values out of deep conviction. Getting on the right course in faith. Religious institutions and denominations will no longer guide religious life. Faith is defined by personal relationship to God, which is spirituality instead of religion. It's creational order instead of law. It's fellowship in everyday life instead of membership, which is organism instead of organisation. Here's some definitions of unhealthy faith. A lack of congruence. Emotions are experienced as indicators of being okay or not being okay with God. Emotion experience is judged morally or religiously. Fear, anxiousness, anger, etc. are bad. Joy, pleasure, happiness, etc. are sinful. Well, at least if they're not so sin sinful, they're at least very suspicious. More unhealthy faith. Puppet string guidance, external locus of control, persuasion, our own wishes are probably bad. Look at Philippians 2.13. A constant need for confirmation from outside, church leaders, God, the Holy Spirit. A lack of initiative, learned helplessness, a disregard for natural gifts and talents. Personal motives are suspect or egotistical. More aspects of unhealthy faith. One can never do enough. We're always eager to serve and a high need to be needed. A poor balance between work and relaxation. We cannot allow others to care. Weakness and boundaries are experienced as sin. 
result for the church more and more people do increasingly less and less and less people do constantly more unhealthy faith we don't trust creation it's worldly we mistake worldly with sinful we're over reluctant towards secular resources science other cultures etc the antidote is examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21 more unhealthy faith authoritarian structures separation individualization e.g. parent child is discouraged or punished power play pastoral leadership in churches where obedience towards God equals obedience towards people maturity our own opinions grown-up discipleship are actually unwanted okay enough of the negative let's have a look at some healthy faith living within God's order makes life easier God is not a spoil sport the rules he gives help us to live successful and meaningful lives God's commandments lead us to freedom sin leads to slavery living in tune with creation is easier and it's less dangerous healthy faith servitude and devotion empathetic perception of others needs a sense of community and fellowship healthy balance of caring for others and being cared for meaningful relationships healthy faith belonging to the body of Christ church as an extended family system special interest groups for all ages and networking across generations opportunities to develop skills source of good information on love relationship and life in general help with everyday issues healthy faith reconciliation with others being reconciled with God helps to forgive others being reconciled makes it easier to admit one's faults and to ask for forgiveness healthy faith hope for eternity belief in God's new world gives a new perspective on suffering the final judgment on my life is spoken on the cross it is finished and this is the end of this lecture but for your pace test on lecture 8 this time I'd like you to write a 500 word essay on what you think are the differences between modern culture and postmodern culture